Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Amen. Amen. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. You be glorified. Lord, as we come before your throne, as we anticipate the bread and the juice that we are about to eat, Lord, may our hearts be ready for you. Take it in a worthy manner. Take it in a manner that exalts you and glorifies you. As we remember your death. We praise you for life. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. Your everyday provisions, God. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus. Oh, we praise your name. Lord, we are so thankful that you are real, that you are there. Lord, for those who don't know you and have no hope, my heart goes out to them, Lord, this morning. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would lighten their heart, Lord, that you would uh, cause them to seek you and find you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that we would be there, Lord, to, to be that witness, to be that um, example, Lord, of your love and your joy to the world, Lord. I just pray this now in Jesus' name. This morning, if you need prayer for me, I think I'd encourage you to come forward and let our prayer partners pray with you. Uh, God reaches out and touches you as you come forward. It's just a, it's a step of faith. And God can make your life complete through our walk with God, our walk with faith, our faith steps. Amen.
right with you, Lord.
from the Lord what I also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you pro proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us raise up the bread and give thanks. Father in heaven, we thank you for the bread that we are about to take part in. Identifying with our Lord and Savior Jesus. For what he did, Lord, for each and every one of us, each and every person who wanted to call upon you, to obey, to love, to honor, to enjoy. Father, thank you for this. In Jesus' name, let us know. Father, we give thanks for this cup that we are about to drink, representing the blood that was shed for us as we drink of this. May we be reminded and remember the death that you took upon yourself for each and every one of us that would call upon you. You have brought salvation to those who would recognize you for that. You have brought forgiveness. You have brought justification. You have brought us into right relationship. As we drink of this, we identify with you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let us drink. Father, we praise and thank you for your goodness, your mercies. And Lord, as we continue in the worship and fellowship, may you be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us greet one.
Uh, we bear that in our lives and we praise Him for life, life everlasting. For all who call upon the Lord to be saved, and may that hope be resting upon you. If it isn't, through the words that were sung, uh, through the word that's uh, to be preached, uh, may you come and know Jesus. May you come and know Jesus. If you could have a man come forward at this time for giving you that portion that God's laid upon your heart to give. Thank you, gentlemen. Pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for every opportunity to return unto you that which you have given to us. We give that portion that you have placed on our hearts. So we can give joy and confidence to you are the provider. You are the good and glorious God. You be honored as we give. We thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. 
Amen. Thank you for that song. How many are thankful for prayers? Amen. Amen. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Today is a working potluck. If you, I was standing right over a vent over there. It must have been coming right from the kitchen when I was <laughs> doing communion. It smelled really good. I kind of envy those that are working uh, to, to de decorate for Christmas right after the service. If you didn't bring any potluck and want to work, I will donate half of mine because I got reserves after this week. <laughs> so anyway, working uh, potluck, but tonight we have, I would call them a throwback Pentecostal evangelist. Some of us grew up uh, with evangelists coming in Dean Gosen, if you're familiar with him, is coming in at 7 p.m. Now, normally our Sunday night services only go till about 8. Uh, last time we had him, uh, I went quite a bit later, but you won't be sorry. Uh, and besides, there's not a Vikings game today. So you can take an AG nap. And if anybody wants to know what an AG nap is, talk to Jack and Cheryl. They'll tell you what an AG nap is. So, hopefully we'll see you tonight, 7 o'clock, Dean Gosen. Uh, this week we've got a lot going on, the Riverside Bible Study going on down at Pilger, 10.30 a.m. Wednesday night. Uh, something for each one. I like that Forge name. I don't know who came up with that, but that is a great, great title for the youth group, uh, but there's something for everybody, 7 o'clock Wednesday night, Thursday, Bible study up at Liz's, Friday, the ladies' Christmas party at the casino, 6 p.m., bring five inexpensive gifts and invite some friends. Saturday is Authentic Manhood in the Sanctuary at 8 to 10 p.m., uh, also going on, at, uh, going on down at the school, it's in play. Some people involved in the church. <laughs> Next week, uh, Christmas program practices are coming up. So bring your kids out for that. That's always a great tradition here at Casino for Christmas time. A few things coming up. Live Nativity as well, another tradition. Coming up December 16th. Still looking for more workers. 14th and 16th, 6 to 8.30 p.m. So, get involved. I like this note here on the pie auction. $3,100, wow. And the loan offering, $38,000. You are generous people, and we appreciate it. Not just your money, but your time. We've got people that have been working all fall up there on the new church. And we've got people in the trenches week in, week out working with children and doing the things that need to be done to keep the casino moving on. I trust most kids are at Children's Church. Oh, we still have another announcement, so I am put on hold. So for those of you going on the trip, December 2nd is a due date. There was one major change uh, that happened with that. So we changed the dates. The start date is the same, but we're just two days shorter. So it's going to be February 20th through the 27th. Um, there is still a chance for those of you who feel the tug on their heart to go um, help out in El Salvador. There's the sign-up sheet. It was over there on the back by the Lab Activity sign-up sheet. Um, we do have a quick video sent by um, the people over at King's Castle, and then we'll talk a little bit after that. So.
stand up, maybe? There's a couple of us in there. Awesome. I just want you to see these guys and just be in prayer for them and us on this trip. So um, as we continue on getting closer, keep these people in mind um, that are going. And you guys can sit down. Again, it's not too late. Come talk to me after church. Come talk to Dan or Daryl or any one of us, and we will um, help you get signed up and ready to go. And with that, Jessalyn has... Yeah, and I get to um, come alongside Mariah and just help out with fundraising. And um, in the bulletin, you should have gotten just like a little bio of actually Mariah and then Daryl. Um, so every week, we're going to come out and just have some information um, about each person that's coming and then what's super important is that specific prayer. Um, sorry, I am related to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm just so excited for the people who are going and we're a part of an awesome church family who gets to pray. Um, and so, like I said, in each of each week in the bulletin, there'll be at that specific prayer for that person who's going. Um, so I just urge you and challenge you to look at those um, starting now and then even throughout um, while they're there and after just that specific prayer that they um, are calling us to pray about. Um, also, if you feel that God is leading you to give, um, you can give online and also through check or cash, um, you can give it to me or uh, to Tammy. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much, church, for sending um, these amazing people. And again, just keep them in prayer. Balaam, 
and who taught Balak, or who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and committing sexual immorality. <coughs> Likewise, also you have those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him, for uh, to him who receives it. Now, as we go back and look at this, um, uh, uh, several references in there, we hear the idea of the um, uh, Satan's seat. We hear that, and, and what was that? That was the altar of Zeus uh, that was there, uh, but not only the altar of Zeus, there's also several other gods and goddesses that they would worship. Um, but the altar of, of Zeus, the seat of Satan, um, interestingly enough, is uh, the replica of that is found housed in uh, Germany at one of their museums in Berlin, I believe. Um, and if you if, if you're a, a history buff, if you remember uh, Hitler's podium and, and stadium, he constructed that with the idea of the altar of Zeus in mind. Okay? That, that, that's what he took that, um, that idea from. But it's, it's, a, it's an altar where they would worship the altar of, uh, at the altar of Zeus, um, uh, committing this idolatrous um, uh, uh, act against God. There was also within in this um, uh, the goddess, uh, or excuse me, uh, Asclepius, um, the snake god, okay, a, a snake god, who, could, who was believed could heal. And so going into this temple, this, this uh, false god's temple, uh, as you walk through the temple and you get, you're, you're asking for this healing, and if, if it appeared that you got healed, what they would do as you exit out uh, a different portion of the building is on a white stone, they would write your name as a witness, as a testimony to the reality of the healing by this god. Okay? On a white stone. And as we look at these letters, you're going to see God addressing certain things, uh, particulars like this. Satan's seat, white stone. It's, it's things that were, that were, they understood in their city, oh, I, I know what he's talking about. This is what this deals with. And so the, 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 that's a little bit of the background that Jesus uh, has sent this revelation to um, Pergamum. And it wasn't just to say, hey, look how I can co uh, coordinate all this uh, together. No. Um, what he did was, uh, in, in each one of these letters, it's for every church to read and take note. To take note, is, is this me, God? Is this me, God? Is, am I bowing down to a false God? Am I, am I going after? Do I place something before you, O oh God, in my life? Now, how many here would say you bow down to the altar of Zeus? Okay, it's the altar of Satan. Okay, getting further and further. Nobody would admit to that, right? Except for one that truly uh, uh, sits down and, and worships Satan. Um, and, and it's a reality that's taking place in America. It's, it's taking place in America. And as a church, though, we need to be careful um, that, that we don't allow that that to come in to our body, into the body of Christ. Well, that would never happen. Of course we wouldn't come in and say, hey, we're worshiping God, or, or worshiping Satan. We'd come in and we'd begin to do little things, right? So we need to be careful of that. Which leads me to that, uh, the story of Balaam. Okay? Uh, leading Balak. Hey, Balak, all you have to do, I, if you go back and read that in Numbers, I think uh, chapter 30, uh, or excuse me, 22 through 24, um, uh, Balak the king asked for the, the prophet Balaam to come and to, to proclaim this curse against Israel. But Balaam, amazingly, he was not, uh, he was not a, a, a 
godly um, prophet, but he did listen to God. And he tells Malik, he says, I will only tell you what God tells me to say. I'm not going to say anything contrary to that. And so four times, uh, this Balak, uh, King Balak, asked him, hey, bring, rain down this curse upon them. And, and each time, um, Balaam would come back with, with his blessing. Israel is, is God's chosen people. Israel is to be blessed. Israel is to be honored. Israel is to be protected. You know, he keeps, keeps bringing this blessing back. And Balak's like, I'm paying you not for this. Okay? So eventually, um, it, through, through Scripture, we find uh, that what Balaam, Balaam did was, Balaam, this is what you do. You just go in there and you just pepper pepper a little bit what you guys do and try to draw them out to worship the things you do. To do what, what, uh, what they shouldn't do, but what you do against God. And sure enough, men would go in and take, their, take for them a wife from, uh, I think it was Moab, uh, the Moabite women, and take them back. And eventually those men, they started practicing Moabite worship. Not worshiping the one true God. And it's allowing that, that compromise or allowing that to take place in a church, in, in, in a body in, in particular. When I read this, I, I read, read it in two, two manners. One, God, is this true of my life? Am I allowing things that, that cause me to be compromised? And number two, Lord, what is it within this body of believers that, that you've placed me in as a member of? Are we doing that? Are we allowing things in this, in, in here, and not addressing them and, and, and kicking them out, the, those, those actions, per se? I think we need to. I, I think we need to. I know we need to. Let me say that. But my heart's desire is that, that every believer that's in here today does that as well. Look at, look at your heart. Are there areas of compromise that is going on right now? Are there areas that you're allowing uh, uh, a foothold of Satan in your life? Allowing that, well, it's not that bad. We can do this. And is the Spirit saying, no, you need to get that out of your life. There, now there's the kicker, right? There's the kicker. If you feel the, the unction, if you feel the, the, the urging of the Holy Spirit saying, we need to discuss this and, and cover this because this is not the uh, this is not what ought to be in your life. You need to take some time. So okay, I need to get rid of this. God help me. Show me what I must do. It's a, it's a warning. All all seven of these letters are, are a warning and an encouragement for every believer for every church. So we have uh, the, the seed of Satan. He addresses that. He, we have the, the uh, Balak, uh, King Balak, uh, asking Balaam to bring curses uh, and, and what Balaam has for them. Uh, we have the arise, uh, the teaching of the Nicolaitans, again showing up uh, all the way th through these letters. You see that. So it must, and again, there, there isn't one commentator that, you know, any, there isn't a, a serious statement as to this is who these people Nicolaitans. They, nobody really knows. All we know is, is that they were teaching and preaching the wrong things and beginning to cause the church to, to fall into those things. And Jesus is saying, no, get them away. Know the truth. Know Jesus Christ. Know the good news of Jesus. That is what we compare all our teaching to. We don't compare it to man. I, you know, you could be a D.L. Moody. He's dead and gone. I get it. Okay, but we don't we don't go off. We, we don't preach D.L. Moody. We don't preach Billy Graham. We don't preach. You put in there your favorite preacher. We preach Jesus, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Son of God. We preach that we we honor and glorify the one true God. Beside him, there is no other. There is no comparison to him. There's none like him. We preach that Jesus is, is the Son of God, the Son of the living God. 
we preach that, that we, from the inspired word of God, we believe by faith and trust that this is inspired of God. And as you read through it time and time again, you see the, the, the beauty of it, the flow of it, the, 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 the authenticity of it, the sincerity of it, the genuineness of it. That's what we preach. And to begin to preach anything else, we would fall into to, to wrong teaching. And, and in this uh, letter, Jesus is warning us, be careful of that. Be careful of that. And what does he say in verse 16? And he says, repent, therefore. Repent, therefore. Change those things. Change those things. Jesus is calling the church. Jesus is calling you and I to be attentive to this calling on our life as we follow after him. To live godly lives. And in Him we're made perfect. In Him uh, we are holy before a holy God. By Him we're made holy. And I get it. We're not perfect people. None of us are. None of us will be. But to work that out, to continue that process of, of being sanctified in Jesus Christ in your life, being willing to say, Jesus, search me. Find no offensive way in me as King David It's down to verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear. Um, you might get tired of hearing that for the next uh, four or five weeks because uh, that's one of the lines in every one of these letters. He who has an ear, let him hear. Are you being attentive to what the Holy Spirit is saying this morning? Are you being attentive to the Holy Spirit every day? Each time we come together, each time we... We, we step into a position, into a, a situation, be it reading God's Word, being doing a devotions, be it uh, being a, a, a corporate setting like this, be it a Sunday school class, a Bible study. Are you saying, Lord, show me. Help me to hear what you want me to hear. Help me to change what you want me to change. And it's, and it's being obedient to that. Being obedient. And in that obedience, to him who overcomes, I will uh, give some manna. Hidden, uh, of the hidden man, I will also give him white stone. New name. Again, there's that reference to that, that uh, uh, false god uh, that, that they would do in that city. And he's saying, no, you, you'll receive a new name. You will receive on a white tablet. The true, true salvation, true forgiveness, true healing in Christ, in Christ alone. And so with that, that's that's the that's the background, that's that's the, the challenge for us today. Are we are we living a life of compromise before God? Are we living a life where there's, there's a conviction being placed upon us even this morning. What are we going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? What am I going to do with that conviction upon my heart? And as we obey, God provides daily for us. God protects us ultimately. We see that. We know that. But these three, these three things, I just want to lay it on the feet. Can you hear the Spirit call you to relationship to God in Christ Jesus? That's for those who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today. That's for those that aren't walking in a relationship with Jesus Christ today. Do you feel a, a, a draw into relationship with Jesus? That's the Holy Spirit saying, come, follow Jesus. Receive the forgiveness of your sin. Receive that righteousness that is only bestowed upon you by Jesus Christ. Come, receive that. The Holy Spirit is offering that. God is offering that to you this morning. As an individual, are there areas of allowances, of complacency, of evil that the Spirit is acknowledging in your heart? This is for the follower of Jesus Christ. 
This is for you and I, for me. Is the Spirit bringing conviction upon your heart of a complacency, of an evil, of a, compro of a composite, compromising aspect in your relationship? It's, it's each and every day we need to allow the Spirit to do that. And the last statement, the last challenge I want to make for us as a, as a body of believers. As a body, may we be vigilant to stand firm, rejecting evil, and rejoice only in Christ Jesus. Let us be a body that as we gather together, that we don't allow things to sneak in. Let us be a body that, that questions anything that's being introduced. Compare it to Scripture. Does this fit Scripture? Does this, does this work with Scripture? Is it true? Is it not true? Let us be a body that is ever vigilant about that. And every church needs that. Will you be those people that will be vigilant with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this warning, uh, Lord, to the churches, uh, to, the, to that first church of Ephesus, Lord, for forgetting that love that love with you and that love for one another, Lord. Help us to, to stand in that. Lord, thank you for your word today, Lord, to, to challenge us in, in comp compromising attitudes or actions. Father, help us. Help us to be your people that are faithful and steadfast and true. Lord, as we give you the rest of this day, let us walk. Let us be the people that hear. Let us be the people that obey. Let us be the people that trust. Let us be the people that act on your behalf for your glory and your honor. Father, you are good. I thank you for these letters. I thank you for your word. As we leave this place now and go out to do the ministry that you have for us to do. In our homes first and, and then uh, outside the walls of the home. Lord. And we be found faithful doing that. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you, if, if you are being challenged by the Spirit, by a word spoken, or, or you know, Spirit talking to you, come up to this altar and, and, and kneel down before God. It's not a mystical thing. It's not a magical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. Getting out from where you're comfortable. Coming to a place we're kneeling on not wealthy padded concrete. Hmm. We're taking a knee and saying, Lord, this is the issue you're dealing with. And don't leave the spot until you deal with it with, with God. I challenge you with that. If you're giving your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, tell somebody about it. Tell me about it. I want to know. I will rejoice with you. But if you've given your heart to the Lord, you will become part of our family. The family of God. Now, let's go outside these walls and do ministry. Amen.